everyone, I'm Ashley and this is Garden Buzz. It's almost Thanksgiving and I volunteered to bring the pumpkin pie. I grew pumpkin pie pumpkins or sometimes called sugar pie pumpkins in my garden this year. Right now they're on my front porch as decoration, but we're gonna head out there and grab them and then I'm gonna show you how to make pumpkin puree so you can use it in your pies. All right, I have one in the house already and a few more out on the porch. So let's head out there and get them. I didn't get very many pumpkins this year because like I've said in other videos, squash bugs got them. But I do have a few, I think enough to make pumpkin pie and maybe some pumpkin cookies or, oh, I got a pack package on the front porch. That scared me, it fell into my house. Oh. I think this might be my dried flowers that I'm gonna use for Christmas decorations. All right. Okay, here we go. Let's head outside, get those pumpkins. Okay. All right, here's one right here. Just a little teeny guy. And then I've got two more right there, these two right here. Hi, Ari. Looking so cute, aren't you? Oh, you see cute puppy? Yes, you are. Well, we got all four pumpkins and we're ready to slice them open and bake them in the oven. But before we do, let's go over some of the types of pumpkins you can grow in your garden to use for pumpkin puree. So I grew these ones, they are small sugar. I haven't tested them out yet, so I can't tell you how good they are or not. But they are on a lot of lists for best pie pumpkins. So here's hoping. Let me give you a few more examples of pie pumpkins you could grow. I've got a list here. So you could do Baby Bear, Cinderella. There's one called Dickinson, Easy Sweet Sugar Pie, uh, orange smoothie, spooky, and triple treat. So those are just a few, there's a lot more. The reason they say not to use the pumpkins you would buy to carve jack-o'-lanterns is because they're kind of tasteless and they're really watery and stringy. So uh, the sugar pie pumpkins are best to use. I need to get this stem off of the top of the pumpkin. So that it won't be in the oven when I cook it. So I'm just gonna turn it on its side here and I'm gonna just take off the top just a little bit. Might take me a while to cut this off. Just be patient with yourself. Just gotta use some muscle here. It's definitely not gonna be a pretty cut. Almost there. And got it. Okay, one down, three more to go. step is going to be to cut the pumpkin in half. So let's do this one. Okay, I have found mistake number one already. This one's been in the house for several days. The other three have been on the front porch and uh, they're frozen. So that's why they're really hard to cut through. But this one's pretty easy. 
So we're gonna start with this one. And then after we cut it in half, we're gonna scoop all the seeds and pulp out. And then we'll set it on a baking tray that is lined with parchment. And I'm gonna put a little melted butter just here on the edges so that it doesn't stick to the parchment paper. And I'm gonna save the seeds because I like roasted pumpkin seeds. I got two of them gutted and now I'm gonna put them on a pan. I thought I had parchment paper but I have freezer paper so we're gonna use good old aluminum foil and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil. I think I'm gonna use um, I'll use vegetable oil. I'm just gonna rub a little bit of vegetable oil just in case so they don't stick to the aluminum foil. All right. There we go, just a little bit. Rub it right here so it doesn't stick. Shouldn't change the flavor of it. I don't know how these are gonna cook since this one's frozen, but we're gonna cross our fingers and hope for the best. All right, there we go. I'm gonna face them down like this. Oh, that one's still got a couple seats on it. And then this one that was not frozen should cook fairly easy. I'm gonna put them in a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Uh, the best way to test to see if they're done is to stick a knife in it, and if it goes in easy and pulls out easy, then they're done. If not, they need longer, so in they go. The timer's going off, so let's check these pumpkins. Ooh, look at those. Oh, there goes my camera fogging up on me. All right, here we go. The big one seems like it's done, but that little one that was frozen might need a little longer. I'm gonna take it out to check it a little bit better and then we'll put it back in if we need to. Let's turn this timer off though, that's annoying. Okay. 
Okay. Ooh, those look delicious. Look how they look like they're glistening. So beautiful. Okay, so from what I heard, the skin should just peel right off. So I'm gonna just cut a section of it here. See if it will just come off. Oh, it's hot. Kind of. We got the pumpkins baked and I took the skin off and I sliced them into little pieces. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them through the food processor and puree them because we are making pureed pumpkin. And then I'm gonna put it in a jar and can it so that it will stay good for a while. I got the whole jar filled up. This is about one pumpkin. I still have another one that I can do and two more in the oven. So I think I'm gonna have plenty for pumpkin pie, pumpkin soup, cookies, bread. Also, I can can these. I can put them in my pressure cooker and they will last for quite a while before they go bad. So if I don't get them all used, then that's what I'll do. Anyways, let's give it a taste and compare it to canned pumpkin. All right, here we go. I like it, it's really good. It's got kind of a sweet flavor to it. Uh, when I taste canned pumpkin, it's a little bit more bland than this, so I would go with the fresh stuff. Plus it makes me feel happy that I grew it from my own garden and it's fresh and natural and there's no artificial flavors or preservatives in it. Anyways, that's how you make pureed pumpkin. Next time I'm going to be making pumpkin pie, so be sure to watch. Any gardening you find to do, I hope you enjoy it and happy gardening.